This may be proof that vampires exist. I was wandering New Orleans recently and I heard whispers of someone named Count St. Germain. Count St. Germain first came into the public eye in the early 1700s. He was well recognized in the French court. Over the decades, he was seen in a lot of other European courts. He never seemed to age. St. Germain is spotted multiple other times during the 1800s. Then a man named Major Fraser writes an entire book about his dad's encounter with St. Germain. St details about look and charisma and everything. Fast forward to the 1900s. There's another St. Germain sighting and this time people may be onto him because he disappears for 50 years and he is spotted again in the 1970s and we're getting more to modern day here. Then in 2002 someone named St. Germain which I feel like is not a common name y'all. Not a common name. So then apparently this Silicon Valley man disappears without a trace. Of course. But no one has seen Count St. Germain since then. We know he lives forever, supposedly. Well, what about the darker side of this conspiracy? He was known to be an alchemist, so one of the theories is that he found the elixir to living forever. Other people theorize that he was a member of the Freemasons. In this theory, he is actually still alive and still leading the Illuminati or the Freemasons or whatever, and he is using arcane abilities to cheat death. Some people have also pointed out that there are a lot of missing cases around the time when there are St. Germain sightings. Some even go as far to say that he uses a darker means having to do with those missing people to sustain his life force. Some people also believe that he is an ascended master or someone who's guiding human evolution. Also, St. Germain started a whole cult of vampirism in New Orleans. These people go as far as to pay people to be donors so that they can drink their blood. Yeah, you heard that correctly. People in New Orleans are drinking other people's blood. No matter which St. Germain theory you believe, Lee. You see this man, you should run. Now let's talk about Richard Chase, the vampire of Sacramento. In the late 1970s, he carried out a series of horrifying crimes. He had six counts of murder and there might have been more. He was called the vampire of Sacramento because he would drink his victim's blood. He believed by drinking their blood, it was keeping him alive. He was caught and not long after he passed away in jail, but a cult appeared. And now to this day, there are people who identify in California as real vampires and they actually have to consume energy or even blood to maintain their well-being, which not only do I feel like is impossible, but also like, why would a vampire choose to live in California? It's the Sunshine State. And of course, California is home to Hollywood, which produces all of these vampire movies. While California is not as crazy as New Orleans, it's still just crazy that there's vampires, real people who drink blood. 